Hello there, everyone, and salutations. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, in which we are playing, of course, as you know by now, to you know, the last of Europe. Rolex Commissariat Scandinavian is looking fantastic. Orenburg is looking fantastic. Spetsgruppa the fifth is looking different. Okay, but, you know, what? whatever. A successful infiltration. We've been awaiting the news with beta breath. At last, the reports are flooding in. The infiltration of Scotland is heralded in an astounding success. With tireless diligence and masterful finesse, our agents have successfully carried out their secret operations, thrusting Scotland into a weaker position than ever before. Our civil disobedience has been triggered by the destruction of key targets and all manner of chaos has erupted throughout the nation following the mass assassinations of Scottish politicians. When you're blaming the German Reich, more radical factions reporting their accusations elsewhere in the world from the Irish to the Japanese. A few even looked inwards, turning their blame towards fellow Scotsmen for political purposes. A celebration comes later. Case Sertic rolls on, and we are one step closer to the eventual invasion of Scotland. An unexpected outcome. As we are inciting Irish tensions. Please don't look at the poverty rate, it is not getting worse. Your eyes are lying to you. Huh. Beautiful. Now conquer the Isles. I think I read this one last time. Uh, so if you want to use this one, please go ahead. So we will conquer the Isles, which I think I read last time. I could be wrong about that, though. Um, who do we want to invade in this direction? That look pretty good. But these guys are pretty decent too. From here to there, that'd be nice. Two, three. You guys go from here to there. Two, three. Here to there. And from here to up there. Go ahead. Oh, I moved you guys down here. Oh, I wanted to go to war with uh, those guys. There go. Let's see, they'll actually attack us maybe instead. Inside Irish tensions, and then we'll try to conquer the Isles as we'll try to get our guys up here very, very quickly. Uh, any more ships? Yes. Oh, that's 145, huh? No, that ain't half bad. We, at this point, might want some subbies uh, by themselves. Top. There you go. And subbies. Risk. There you go. Not bad. I'm right, happy August, everybody. We do have a cup of green tea here right now. No, help us drink, 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 drink. Actually, before we do that, do we have any more planes? They might need that. They might need this. And it might be time to destroy the rest of these nations here, too. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Out of sight, huh? Well, I read this one last time. Uh, a German administration versus collaborators in high places. I like that one, but... A German administration. Uh, once a <clears throat> terrorist organization, always a terrorist organization, the Iron Guard helped us, it's true, but they are an organization fundamentally dedicated to their vision of Romania, which does not align with their own. Namely, their vision does not have Romania within it at all, just Germany forever expanding as its destiny. Organize a meeting, kill those who attend, and hunt down those who do not. We should not have a partisan problem if we can't preempt its formation. I'm a little surprised that they don't want... Oh. Uh, so all these people want to help them out, whatever. Still don't want to attack, okay. Oh, did England not join? Oh, Militär, Militär Verwaltung Britannien. Oh, we're not at war with these guys. Oh, I thought we would be. Well, see how we do. Hope we do all right. Beautiful. Enjoy it. Land, 
go right on ahead. 154 versus several tens of thousands of uh, Irish folk. Not to love. Oh, the Japanese are there too. Look at that. Okay. Eight billion. Of, oh, we invade Scotland. Oh yeah, go go right ahead. It's fine. So don't want to attack us, huh? Oh. Ooh. Mmm. Tanks are nice. Just from uh, exercising. Okay, I'm okay with that. Attack. Ah, uh, fun hush. There you go. We don't care. Oh. German administration, very good. Sure, why not? Just demolishing these Scots and Irish folk, my god. Limerick. A little bit out of sight. Scrounge up an administration. The Civil War in Muscovine has been devastating. The local administration, or what's left of it, is scattered to the four corners of the colony. The vast majority, unfortunately, were purged during the war and need to be replaced in order to get Moscow in good running order. This could prove to be a challenge. At a closer look, it seemed that nearly the entire structure that Kosh had put together was totally defunct. Not only do we need to restaff nearly the whole administration, but we also need to restructure it from the ground up. This will take time, but it will be worth it in the long term. Uh oh. Nice. Happy September, everybody. Good. Nice. You don't need a lot, you just need a lot of good. All the way, huh? Absolutely beautiful. You know, they should have listened to us when earlier on. Prisons, huh? Hospitals. Ooh, back to production research speed. More prisons, huh? Got Hopstadt, Germania? Sure, why not? We'll throw in another uh, synthetic refinery. I'm sure we could use it because right now negative 2.4 surplus, 64.5. Nice. There those goes those guys. Trade wise, we are what? Oh, look at this. Oh, that's not good. We have negative 10 units of rubber. Interesting. Oh, that's not good. Scrounge up an administration. Burn the promises. After the bloody fight, the Rex comes to Ukraine. It's finally back to our hands. Now we should deal with the remnants of different look factions within its border. In order to secure a smooth victory over Lebrant, some of them were allied with us during the war, including the Ukrainian Cossacks and some Germans whose loyalties are more than suspicious, which required us to promise that we'll fulfill their dreams after our triumph. Though it is us who acted as the mainstay of the war, now the war is over and those so-called allies have come to ask us for to keep our promises. Of course, their wishes will never be fulfilled, as we've burned all the promises we've made. And I understand who that who is the real master of Ukraine from now on is.
conquest of the Isles. If there's anything that we should regret in the Second World War, it should be that we never truly conquered the whole of Great Britain due to strategic reasons. Oh god, that's really bad. Oh. That's really sad and bad. Um, but there's a Scottish Navy, but whatever. Um, which allows small nations like Scotland and Welsh to have their independence for more than 20 years. But now such a small flaw has been eradicated since the Harris stormed the two countries during the reconquest of Britain. Um, from the Scottish Highlands to Cardiff, the country used to be known as the United Kingdom is finally united again, but under the rule of the Reich this time. New conquest, of course. They didn't have problems for us to deal with. No one in this world would be willing to give their hard-won liberty away so easily, and local guerrilla and anti-guerrilla activities has immediately begun when we stepped on their lands. If we wish to have a peaceful Britain behind us, as well as utilize local manpower and natural resources, we must think carefully about how to set up our own administrations. And the music played by the Scottish bagpipes. The Führer finally makes a decision. Scotland will be ruled by military of Alton Britannia, alongside England due to their distant geopolitical position. And as for the Welsh, the Führer decided that a united uh, military of Alton Britannia for the former United Kingdom. I forgot the navy, but whatever. Pretty good. Beautiful. What can I make of these divisions? Cool. Empower the German minority. As part of the initial plan of our new world order, the Reich's Commissariat of Ukraine is meant to be a settlement for pe German people. That could provide endless grains and other natural resources for the German Reich, however. Our exploitation of Ukraine was disrupted by Lebrun's per uh, preserve uh, acts, and it's all thanks to the fierce courage and wisdom that we can take it back. Now, it's time to make everything right, or return everything to the rightful places. All ridiculous and vicious policies made by Lebrun including those about native rights and racial reconciliation, will immediately be abolished, and the German people who kept loyal to their legitimate government will be granted their lost privileges. This time, the Aryan race will be the master of the Ukrainian fields for more, far more than a thousand years. Keep the reins tight. Felt Marshal Shona had grown rather tired of the way the Ukrainians spoke to him. At first, the man had wholeheartedly believed that their promises of freedom, the sweet nothings the militaries had whispered in the Ukrainian partisans' ears. Now, after the militaries had ruled over Ukraine for some time, he seemed to expect the Germans to actually deliver on such a thing. Truly delusional. Shona thought to himself before turning to regard the man coldly. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I did not hear that last part. The Ukrainian practically bit off his tongue in a hurry to shriek at the German. Field Marshal, we've seen none of the autonomy that your Fuhrer promised us. We have more than held our end of the bargain, yet your men seem to have taken no steps to even come close to honoring it. The man moved to speak more, but instead cleared his throat. Shona determined that he'd probably come close to saying something somewhat vulgar. Shona narrowed his eyes before giving the answer he always gave. Those things take time. Naturally, the Reich has every intention of honoring its commitments to our friends in the Ukraine, but we must first consolidate our hold on the region. As long as you continue to uphold the agreement, we will grant your freedoms in due time. It was a bold-faced, brazen lie, grasping at a sliver of hope. New Union. I read this one last time, too. If you read this one, please go ahead. Everyone's got to be under the same administration. No ifs, and or buts. Ah, green tea, not bad. Commence war plan B. Cool. Split the Isles, that's, that's good to do then. Uh, I think we deserve a reward after doing everything we've done so far. What do we got here? Cruiser's outdated, carrier's outdated. Carrier, cruiser, carrier. What else we got here? It's only one thing of deck armor, it's only one thing of hangar space, so cool. Is that carrier? Basic battleship, which we do need to improve our battleships too. Basic cruiser hull I. Yeah, you could research more stuff on all honesty. Nice. A return to normalcy. Very good. Oh, back to the mills. If you don't need this one too, please go ahead as well. I'll do that one next. And then War Plan B. To have conquered the crumbling states surrounding the Greater German Reich was a matter of inevitability. Now the time's come to immortalize the fatherland standing in Europe once and for all and crush the vicious power that seek to destroy us from without. To the east lies the teeming subhuman masses, huddled within the rotting remains of Russia. With just one final push, the Slavic hordes will be crushed under the might of mighty boot of the advancing Wehrmacht. 
To the south lies the scheming Italians, monkeys and suits who bicker and hoot among themselves while undesirables roam free. Only once the right claims victory over the Iberia and Turkey can we secure a hold on the Mediterranean, and nothing will prevent Italy from falling just as Rome had centuries ago. How much are we lacking here? Attack helicopters, very important, and crap ton of tanks. Already, huh? Happy November. Everyone's training. Two more ships, eh? Nice. Yeah, uh, battleship. How many battleships do we have for this group? Two, four. We must probably have like, a lot of screens here. Lots of screens. Which is fine with me, I don't care. Um, more. I like prefer more factory output. Looking better, not bad. Not great, but it is what it is. A new union. Alright, so anything else here? I think we did all these finally. Now we can go down here. Because a couple episodes ago, I wrote this one a long time ago. So if you want to read about Militaire Wissenschaft, again, please go right ahead. It's not bad. But still. Um, what, how's this better than the last one? Oh, it's probably because of these gun secondaries. Probably. Nice. Good. 2.1. Beautiful. Alright, so we got rid of that other plan, which is actually really super nice. Or plan B. Although we loathe to admit it, our armed forces are not yet ready for an invasion of Italy. We have no way of occupying the colonies, and the Alps are a formidable barrier that we aren't ready to cross just yet. Or strengthening our position, three targets have presented themselves to us. The first of these is Iberia, which stands in the much coveted strategic position. The second is Turkey, which is famed for its vital chromium mines and dominance of the Bosphorus Strait, as well as a land border with the Italians, which could prove as well the most useful in the future. Land is the cursed Slavs for east, the so Siberian plains are rich in resources and enemies alike. We shouldn't neglect these flies, they must be crushed if we are to secure our eastern borders once and for all. Once we've crushed and secured all of the aforementioned foes, we should be more than ready to tackle our rivals to the south. Mm, cool. Flau. Philip. Um, that wouldn't be bad. I want to do fall rot. The time is coming to finish what the predecessor of our glorious leader begun. When Hitler defeated the corrupt and decadent imperialist and Bolshevik powers, he did not see fit to install a truly German administration to rule over the entirety of Russia. Despite his incredible wisdom, this was a mistake, and cost us dearly during the subsequent war with the Western Russian Front. Our new leader, however, has vowed to put an end to this sorry state of affairs. Like an avalanche, we must crush the uh, last pitiful remnant of the Soviet Union and integrate it into our ever-growing domain. The eternal snows of the desolate Siberia shall be melted by the fire burning in our hearts. Heil Goring. War Plan B begins. Boots uh, cracking on a linoleum floor, steeled eyes shifting through cigarette smoke and dancing of numbers upon an unending series of maps and diagrams. The song of the office of the general staff dances fast and can kill those who do not sway to its tomb. An unending torrent of incoming data. Thrones the bearing analyst at his station even as he tries to glance at the wider picture the figures tell. Recover assets and conglomerated capital from the excursions of Warplan A buttressed the budget. With the increase in hair expenses, alone swallowed any windfall gained from the sea's banks, he fears to even wonder what may happen to the windfall stops. In another room, the colonels and other staff officers eye the projection on the wall. The general presents to them the summarized findings and assessments for Warplan B, the calling of those petty fiefdoms on the pack's doorstep. The former triumvirate represents the greatest industrial and military rival of Germany on the continent, yet the weakness is no. Iberia is unstable and Turkey is weak. Though these nations are mountainous, they will fold in the face of the energized Wehrmacht. Italy, however, is different. Modern equipment, defensive positioning, and large resources mean ultimate victory will be slow and therefore strengthening their operational capacity, and a national siege will bring victory in time. All the while, the Slavic Bolsheviks are rising in the east to ensure a successful invasion of the Mediterranean. The eastern front will be, must be, secured once and for all. The crescendo before the finale. Ooh, we're going to Greece. 
All right, y'all, we going to get greased up here. Oh, what? Got you. Reinforce the garrison. New terror bombings. As long as the Luftwaffe fulfilled its admirable duty in bombing the Russian desolation, the warlords were kept in submission. With the end of the bombings, due to the Burger Tree, the warlords began building up their strength once again and eventually began unifying through means either peaceful or violent, giving birth to the monster we are now facing. In order to counter these Bolshevik menace, and let our let, uh, savages understand that the sky is our domain, and ours only, we shall resume the terror bombings over the entirety of Russia, by dynamite or by napalm, the Slavs will bend to their master one way or another. Send in the firebrands. Among the Russians living in Moscow are many who support our ideology, like Count Vlad of Transylvania, who sent Turkish prisoners infected with the plague back to their masters to spread disease and panic among the invaders. We shall plant agitators, firebrands, and terrorists in the territories belonging to our enemies, ready to turn the unsuspected populace to our cause or sabotage their war effort. Those Russians who are so foolish to think that all of their kin are on their side are cruelly oppressed, while they might indeed be true on the latter. The former is still very much up for discussion, and our generous gift will be surely a very convincing argument. We'll send the Russians from Muscovy to start trouble in West Russia. Whether they agree with the rule matters little, as long as they despise the West Russian rulers. 100%. Absolutely. According to Rebellion, Russia has been divided for more than two decades, and many of those warlords had, or still have, deeply conflicting political ideologies. This means that there's lots of fertile ground to see dissent and foment rebellion. By coordinating the agents we have sent there and having them infiltrate already existing opposition movements, it would be easy to set up well-timed uprisings and other disturbances. Often in the case that they don't manage to completely topple the enemy government, they'll still provide a useful source of distraction, forcing them to divert troops to guard supply lines and sensitive targets from terrorist attacks or raids. The firebrands we have sent in done their job impeccably. It's no time for us to launch a coordinated rebellion against the West Russian government, and then fear campaign. We can't limit ourselves to destroy their infrastructure and industry. If we want to prevail quickly and easily, we need to destroy their very hopes and dreams of resisting our advance. To address this, our bombers will not only drop off explosive payloads, but also leaflets, written in Russian where the common folk will be able to know with exact precision what the fate awaiting them should they resist. Of course, they'll all share the same fate of the servitude whether they fight or not, but don't they need they don't need to know that, do they? Total demoralization. Our propaganda campaign is already showing its first results, but we can't rest on our laurels now. We need to increase the pressure on the Russian home front, and for this we shall send even more airplanes with dozens of different payloads. Be it gunpowder or paper, we shall strike directly at the heart of the Bolshevik fools, and their people are weak, of course. Finally, our efforts have paid off, and the Russian people is weaker than ever. The wretches live in terror of the next bombing, just after they thought they would never have to endure such torture any longer. They run and hide like rats and spend their restless nights in abject fear, for they know what awaits them at the end of the night, or end of the war. The time is going to reap the fruits of our hard labor. As soon as the army is ready, shall plunge deep into the Russian heartland, just as we did 20 years ago. Oh, yes, please. Just keep stacking more planes, man. What do we got here? Oh, loot the aisle six six six. Eh, it's not enough. I want more first. Should be able to find, especially when they have to do like simple militia and whatnot. Japanese folly, of course. They want us for Greece. We don't care. They've already killed off fourteen thousand Greek boys. Oh my God, insane. Pretty normal. We need more fuel as well. But we're working on it. Reinforce the garrison. For more than a decade, Rex Commissariat Muscovine has been the first line of defense against the Russian chaos. Now, however, it will become the bridgehead from which we shall launch our unstoppable offensive. In order to prepare for the inevitable beginning of their hostilities, we ensure the Muscovine is properly defended against any threat coming from the east. This end, the German garrison will be bolstered by fresh troops and we must muster our army for invasion. Perfect. Proud sons of Germania. Gross Realm, Germania, is the largest metropolis in the world. Even though such a notion brings pride to every true German around the world, it does have its downsides. After the first economic collapse and even more of the upheaval that followed the Burger Creek, the amount of poor and unemployed areas have reached a staggering numbers. However, we can solve two problems with one stone. Oh, of course, but with one intelligent solution. By conscripting the unemployed masses, we shall both grant people an honorable way to earn a salary and increase our army for the coming war. Our homeland has so much untapped potential, and we shall exploit it for all the good of the Reich. We'll require the most experienced officers in the upcoming campaign in Russia. It's just merely coincidence that the most experienced officers are also well-connected in the far more fanatic elements of the Wehrmacht. Fantastic. Happy 1970, everybody. We finally got there. Um, even though we already researched almost everything here that we need to research already. Go figure. Now we learn Johann von Kielmanzeg. Happy February, everybody. No, 
Nice. Mm. I know we'll get stuff later, but still. Total demoralization. I love it. Taking a while to take out the rest of Greece, huh? Cornwall's finest. Uh, Rehabilitate the battered garrison, huh? Cornwall Garrison is an elite unit made of decorated veterans and extremely capable officers. By enlisting their aid for the coming war, we'll be able to not only make use of them in a suitably difficult environment where they'll be sure to shine, but also increase the morale of the entire army as the common soldiers will be honored to fight along such, such a legendary formation. Enlist the locals. In order to prepare for the offensive, we need as many men as possible, and the Russians of Muscovine are perfect to bolster our numbers. Though their valor and skill are far inferior to what we can expect from our fellow Aryans, they are loyal enough to prevent the risk of a rebellion. Also, the numbers are already a great advantage, and being a Russian themselves, they make a perfect occupation garrison for when we start to consolidate our control over the captured or conquered steps. Nice. Yes, this will be good to do. Yes, please. All this is done already? Awesome. Better planes. Definitely better planes. Beautiful. So, das Militärverwaltung Kleinasien. Ulrich de Mazier. Nice. No one's back up to 8, huh? That sucks. Oh, Canadian Constitution dies in the crib. Cool. Mm. Supplies might be an issue here, maybe. Actually, we are going to focus on Muscovine first, too, anyway, so. Across the east and far away, huh? Provisional People's Committee of Surgut. Surgut. Have a breakthrough moment. Should be pretty easy to do, even though, oh god, resistance is extraordinarily high. Oh, it's bad. Oh, it's really bad. Scandinavia, Balkans, Isles. Your stability is nowhere near where it should be. Still stabilizing, though, that's good. Scandinavia, Balkans. Happy March, everybody. I don't think they're making any more stability, though, unfortunately. Yeah. Negative 0%. That's not good. Yeah, that's good. Oh, whoops. Cool. Charismatic, yeah, be charismatic, why not? That's a little better, actually. Yeah, not that, that much, though. Interesting. Uh, yeah, overall, not bad. Cornwall's finest. But we can't do that one, dang it. We're gonna listen to locals. Ooh. Honestly, a little bit that much. Because we need a crap ton of planes attack. Can't, can't make it any better. That's good though. We got a lot of these guys. We got crap on those guys. Mercenary army, due to the relative scarcity of true Germans, of course. Uh, dozens of mercenary bands operate throughout the border regions of Muscovine, paid by both authorities and privates to protect villages and industries from both raiders and terrorists. If we want to further increase our numbers, we can enlist these armed groups in the army with the promise of a nice payment at the end of the war. Well, these men are completely disloyal. They'll make fine meat for the meat grinder, and we won't even have to pay them afterwards. The arms are ready. Every extensive preparations, and a renewed recruitment drive, the Wehrmacht, is ready to launch an offensive. Our Panzer Division are eager to trample the Russians under their threads once more. 
and both regular soldier and mercenaries have been extensively trained and equipped for the coming war. The time to blow the horns is almost here. As soon as our agents are done with their operation and the Russian morale has been sufficiently lowered, we shall bear the eagle and the swastika to the Slavs uh, to rule as their masters for a thousand years and more. Absolutely. Infantry, soft attack, and defense increased by a certain percentage. I love it. Yeah, the army's ready. Across the east and far away. To the pitiful warlords of the Russian way, so our reckoning has come. The wreck of a thousand years shall take its place at the top of the world as it was before and as it forever shall be. Surrender and be spared to live your lives in the servitude as all inferior racers deserve. Uh, uh, or fight and die to the last. There will be no quarter, no armistice, no mercy. Uh, the Wehrmacht shall be unleashed, and the snow tree shall tinge red with blood. Wir sehen, wir sehen, in den Krieg bis zum Sieg. Cool. Uh, we just go to war with a lot of people. Because I want to make sure we get what we need here first. Ooh, actually, no. It's kind of low. And then rush to the Urals. Well, the Rust and Russia under our total control. We now need to strike at the warlords and control the Urals. It'll be tough battles. The wretches not only had time to prepare for the war while we were crushing their brothers, but they also enjoy the protection of the Urals themselves. Tall, impervious, and heavily fortified. These models will prove a difficult challenge, even for our best units. The Elbow Commando has devised two possible solutions to this problem. The first is to send in more fresh troops from the Vaterland to storm the mountain fortresses. A costly but effective solution. The second is to establish Russian and Pino battalions and force them to attack the fortifications or face execution. Well, much cheaper in both money and German lives wasted. This solution is also riskier as there's a higher chance of desertion or even revolt. I don't know which way I want them to go. Very nice. Continue training. So all this is done, or will get done, that's good. Um, sure, military police, I like that. Sure, why not? We're doing okay on manpower for now. It's actually kind of weird. So we're actually doing really well with that. First domino. Even though we won twice against the Russians in the last two decades, the harsh weather, especially winter, reaped many victims among our forces both times. With modern technologies and synthetic materials, we can easily provide our opera winter clothing for all of our forces at a fraction of the cost it would have taken during the last war. But supplying our men with warm, comfortable war attire, we should deny the Russian rabble their only advantage and prove once and for all that not even General Winter can hope to defeat the Reich. West Russia is simply the first domino to conquest of the East, but also the most important. It is vital. Oh, ball of rock, look at this. Oh boy. Um. The, the first blitz goes perfect. Unlocks following benefits for the 90 days. Those who want to live, let them fight. Those who do not want to fight in this world of the eternal struggle do not deserve to live. I'm going to call our allies in, too. It's going to get really laggy every time we do this. Oh, boy. Wow. Now that's some lag. Can we go in? I don't think we were meant to do that like this, but whatever. Oh, we can do it like this. Attack. Kazakhstan, huh? Tajik, Turkestan. Fall rot. Final invasion of Russia. Fall rot has started across the Reich. Young boys have been sent to the east to fight against the always present Russian menace, but this invasion is unlike any other. Russia is big and its people are many and scattered. Combine this with the absolute plethora of weapons and these conditions form an ideal situation for partisan warfare, and yet the majority of Russian people grow tired of the war and stay in their homes. But should we be too intrusive into their daily lives, they'll start fighting a regime. It's ideal. This could be prevented. 10% increase in supply consumption. Oh, God. Decrease. Will increase. Winter clothes driving. Fighting the snow isn't just a matter of keeping yourself warm. Ice, snow, and low temperatures provide a wide array of logistical and strategic challenges that, if not properly addressed, will result in a humiliating defeat. By training our troops in winter warfare and use the weapons uh, in extreme conditions, and teaching our mechanics and pilots how to keep their vehicles in optimal state even when the fuel in their tank freezes, we shall prevent, or we shall prevail as we did in the past. Ice training. Um, the invasion of Russia is like a great game of domino. All pieces have been painstakingly set into place, but for this reason, it is imperative that we place the first piece falls into a proper way. Western Russia is the first domino, and our invasion won't able, be able to proceed to the next stage until all of it has been secured. To this end, we need to occupy the entirety of the territories belonging to the West Russian warlords. Our men need to understand the difficulty of the task, and feel pride for being the ones who will ensure the Swasco rises from Moscow to the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, we've got to race to the Urals. Uh, actually, you know what? We're doing that one first. Do it ourselves. The Russians have proved time and time again 
their metal, and we'll, for this reason we can't trust any of them any longer. We'll break the uh, euros with the German might and steal blood. No one can stand against us. By initiating a new conscription campaign at home, oh, well, she'll be able to fill any manpower holes that we have. All Russian uh, peanut battalions. Spilling German blood amidst the Euro peaks is a total waste, especially when we can achieve the same result by spilling Russian blood. At last, as the last war taught us, there's always too much Russian blood left to spill. There must be if they can repopulate so quickly after suffering much such losses twice in two decades. In order to take the mountains by force, or mound forts, we shall form Russian penal battalions by conscripting wretches taken from prisons and slave camps. They'll have a simple choice, almost certain death at the hands of their own kin up in snowy Urals, or have certain death at our hands if they refuse. If they survive, there's always another fort to take, or another minefield we can't spare d miners for. After all, we're just copying their own tactics, as Zukov once said. If there's a minefield, the infantry will advance as if there wasn't a minefield. Slightly decrease. Let's see. I like this idea. There you go. That's good. Seventy. So at a time, at a time, at a time, at a time, at a time. Good. Cool. Take the people. Oh. Redevelop the roads. Advancing towards Siberia is a difficult task for a logistical department. Russian infrastructure is already underdeveloped enough, but the situation is worsened after the bombing campaign and the fighting. Now, most railroads are fully unusable, and the majority of the roads are covered in craters, almost all bridges cut to prevent us from advancing. If we want to ensure our troops receive all the supplies they need for the coming campaign, then a concerted effort is needed to bring the infrastructure back to working order. We should pay our way to the final victory. The bankers will be coerced into investing in new roads for Russia, stimulating the economy and make the invasion even easier. Jesus Christ, this is so bad. It's going to destroy our ability to wage war here, honestly. Ooh. That's got a lot of roads to build, man. Ninety four percent. Like, what the heck, man? Brutal oppression. Martial law. We're definitely gonna need like martial law here or something. Kingdom of Sweden. Finland. Go back down. Bad shit fighters. Good. Domino, read about the roads. 
finish them off. Well, we're going to start coming back up here and do this one. Weapons of the Third Valkyrie. The decision to determine the armament focus priority is quite possibly the most influential decision of our decade. Through the invention of new weapons of warfare and destruction, we will more effectively subdue and destroy the enemies of the Gross Germanic Reich, whose numbers increase by the day. You know, determining the future of warfare, a quote from the dissident Jewish scientist Albert Einstein comes to mind. I know now what weapons World War III will be fought, but World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. Pretty much, man, pretty much. Go straight for Orenburg, we have to. Oh, take the people. Oh, well, we're gonna wait for that one. That's why I'm not sending all my tanks in at once. Or I guess maybe I am sending all my tanks in one at once, but like, let's go. Please tell me Owen Brook is dead. Oh no, these guys are fighting over here too. Horsk. Centralizing the military. Every day, dozens of letters. Oh. And papers would pile upon the Fuhrer's desk every day. Oh. He went through them, glancing over each small complaint. However, there were two letters in particular that Goring was waiting on a letter from the OKH, located in Germania, and a letter from the Kriegsmarine, located in Theodorexhofen. Uh, when the two came in one day, Goring sidelined all of the priorities to read them, of course. Oh, look, we actually have another tank division. Look at that. Wow. But quite the pain to wrestle the two high commands in handling over the R&D departments, while Schoen and his followers seemed more than eager to get started on the projects. Schoen himself was uncharacteristically cautious on the matter, attempting to convince his followers to not dive headlong into the projects. Goring sat at the thought of it, it seemed Schoen had at least seen that there was something going on behind the scenes, hopefully, the thought Goring, and start well went out over his brain. Similarly, much of the Spadalai faction seemed happy to, enough to gain more control over the research efforts, but Spado seems to be suspicious of a blatant move to placate the military. Goring had to give credit where credit was due. Spado was no slouch when it came to brains, and he could tell that Goring was not showing his full hand. In any case, both branches had been quite evenly split on their support of opposition to the GRWI. Perhaps that was why these letters had taken so long to arrive, in any case. Goring hoped for the best as he tore the first one open. For once, he'd been doing the trickery and not the other way around. That's all. All hope. Let's hope all goes well. The hair declines. The glorious fear of him and Goring, we here in the OKH have given serious thought to your request. We'd like to point out that a research and development department is one of the best in all of Germany and does not need additional oversight from the civilian government. Despite Herr Alsenberg's arguments, we do not believe that we need to give up on a research and development department for increased efficiency when it is already such an efficient and organized part of the hair. As such, we are afraid that we must decline your request to let us transfer our research department to you. I would personally like to point out that. Goring snorted and slid the paper to his side. The hair is research department. Efficient and organized. What a joke. Goring knew that that was a lie. Shona knew that that was a lie, but apparently the rest of the hair's heads did not. Whatever Shona said to get his point across, it clearly worked on these fools. This was a no fatal blow. Goring had the time, patience, and money to get what he wished for, even though through somewhat e extra legal measures, but it would certainly be a den of the military research. The Fuhrer sighed before turning to the next letter, hoping that it would be more positive than the last. Let's hope this is good. Oof. Oh, hey, with the Feld Grau Grey. The question of potential Wehrmacht uniform innovation troubles our military planners at night, and for some god-known reason. It's for the best uh, that our government establishes position on the matter with haste, indeed, in what has been referred to as a away with the Feldgrau row. Certain officials within the Wehrmacht have recently argued against the continuation of Feldgrau. Conservative figures within the organization continue to have confidence in the Grey, pushing against what they see as an excessive and unnecessary interference from stuff suits. Of course, this falls to the decision of Führer Goring, although we are unsure if it brings such a minor decision. To him, it's not itself a demonstration of ineptitude. The Krieg's Marine declines to a glorious fear of him goring. The Krieg's Marine is taking request with the seriousness that it deserves, after all. Such a major change to our research department will require much work, bureaucratic change, and a lot of money to spend on an organization. There is also some consternation at your true reasons for this change. Some of our admirals seem to believe that this is but an attempt to placate the military. Despite how uh, Osenberg's arguments to the contrary, we in the High Command of the Krieg's Marine have decided to decline your request unless Admiral Horst von Schroeter is allowed to oversee all naval research on the basis of that this maneuver seems to bring no tangible benefit and would only cost more to, uh, than to benefit. 
Goring sighed again as he threw the second letter to the side. Spado's clique had seen through the disguise, at least partially. Without the Kriegs Marine on board, Goring's opportunities to play the militaries would be limited. A temporary setback for sure, Admiral Schota, Schota, as no political mastermind, it can easily be subverted, but one that was frustrating and would slow the plan's progress. Nonetheless, Goring decided to get his drink alone today. Venna would have to work to make up for his failure to deliver. How unfortunate. Alright. GRWI. Slight bit of corruption, but it is what it is. Guns of the future. The Mao's uh, C-96. The Gewehr 43, the Sturm Gewehr 44, all of these and more were products of German genius, and they carried sons of Father Fatherland to victory after victory in the middle of many, many battles. These weapons were the tools of the First and Second World Wars, but the battles of the Third seem closer than ever. When that time comes, the men of the Reich cannot be sent into battle with anything less than perfection afforded only by the Aryan science. Herr Ozenberg has been given permission to fund as much research and development as is necessary to design state-of-the-art personnel equipment for our brave soldiers. The first committee meeting. Welcome, friends, to the first session of the Equipment Revaluation Committee. Polite applause. Oh, this, that's not good. Um, from the room, scientists, generals, and bureaucrats all packed around the table, listening to Ozenberg's words. He smiles, applause died down. Finally, this dream for the Reich's science was coming together. I'd like you to give a similar welcome to my co chair and colleague, General Lieutenant Otto Reimer. Reimer stood to a similar level of applause, though it was clearly concentrated more on the general side of the table. Ozenberg smiled, but one could tell it was a bit forced if they looked hard enough. Reimer was sure on his way, keeping his thumb on research and was certainly going to be painting to deal with. Nothing is perfect, Ozenberg thought. When Reimer's applause died down, Ozenberg began to speak. The first topic will be on the subject of the standard infantry rifle. That's a less on quality of our current rifle, and is more on the quantity of them. Many of our frontline soldiers are still equipped with older models of the rifle. I've heard even reports that some are carrying G43s. It's unacceptable. But, but the question is, how do we go about fixing it? My suggestion is that we transfer guns from the garrison to make up the deficit, build some new ones, and replace the oldest guns with newer models to make up the gap. It won't fully solve our issues, but it will be economically sound. All in favor? Mumbling and debate rumbled across the room. Ozenberg watched. He never expected such a suggestion to be a unanimous agreement, but he let out a small sigh when Raymer got to his feet. I must respectfully disagree, Herr Ozenberg. Raymond said with a grim, we can't let our armies, the pride of the Reich, be equipped with suboptimal equipment any longer, in my opinion. We must be better armed than our opponents, shouldn't we? I propose that we devote as many resources as possible to rearming our soldiers with the best the Reich has, no matter the cost. No soldier should die because he must carry a bolt action into battle. More applause. After the table settled down, a vote was held. The first battle in the committee would be soon reach a conclusion. Raymond wins out. We will have to produce 25,000 infantry equipment on top of the ones required by the equipment revaluation. Compromise is reached. Ozenberg prevails. Decrease influence. Decrease the influence of the militaries by a little bit more. Hmm. More spending. Uh, Ozenberg prevails. Why not? Five percent. Increase the power of the militarists. Improved infantry rifles. Increase the power of the militarists by a small amount. Even three, every 33% GRWI corruption will make the militarists lose more power, but increase the chance military concern will rise. Ooh, increase corruption. It's always a good thing to do. I redevelop the arsenal. The leaguer. Ship experience gain, naval experience. Volks Wissenschaft. Huh. Stockpile all that stuff. I do want to do strategic defense too. Uh, but we can also do, uh, rebuild the Preussische Reichs Academy. To serve the Reich as a general of the Wehrmacht is a dream of a very brave boy in the nation, but being an officer requires outstanding abilities only a few will ever possess. To help to achieve such a dream, we shall restore the old Prussian staff college to provide aspiring officers with a proper education and training. As well as being imbued with the necessary skills, becoming a graduate will provide the youth with great prestige and fame. The Feldgrau debate. Reimer stared across the table towards Ozenberg. And between them, the members of the committee shifted nervously in their seats. It had only been a few weeks since the founding of the committee, and already its two heads seemed to be in direct opposition to each other. Nobody was really surprised by this development, for it to have happened so quickly? Not a good sign for the future. General Lieutenant Reimer, I don't see why the Feldgrau we currently use must have such a sweeping overhaul. It's proven capable in the field. Such a motion seems like a simple waste of time to me. Moments of agreement rippled through the civilian side of the table as Ozenberg leaned back in his chair. Reimer scowled and leaned into the table. Do you not understand that we must advance in all fields, Herr Ozenberg? The Reich must lead the world on all fronts, not just weaponry. Every man are not hidden. What use is their weaponry or the machinery? No, we must forge ahead, and no matter the cost, you look too much at the Reich's marks and not enough of the materials, Ozenberg. I know many of our highest ranking military men would approve of such a change, and they know the art of war more than you, if I may say so. Chuckles and slapping from the generals, Ozenberg did not move. General Leutnant, you don't see the point of it. I don't. 
Nobody except for the OK agent and yourself is clamoring for a change, so it costs millions to research. Well, why don't we put it to a vote then? See what this committee thinks. Is that the point of it, is it not? Raymer smiled, the project is pressed. A new look. The project is struck down. We don't need more political power. We will have to produce 10,000 infantry equipment on top of the ones required by the equipment evaluation. I like factory output, and we need it, but still. All right, we'll let the Isles, why not? And the Balkans, and Scandinavia, okay, why not? Ah, loot everybody. PRWI, corruption increase. Utilize military economic control. Yeah, so we're kind of stuck here for some reason. Um, Orenburg has a lot of cores. Something I just do not understand whatsoever. So. But now they're dead, finally, thank God. Jesus, that took forever. And having to deal with all this extra resistance is not ideal. So ultimately, in the end, that wasn't a good thing for us, but you know, there's not much we can really do about it. Except slowly take them all out, one by one. After reading about Atlantic veterans. Our attempts to renovate our battleships are reported to be a resounding success so far, thanks to the experience in, in some of those who commanded them decades ago. However, through the, though these admirals have been invaluable in their help, the fact remains that some of them have become simply too old for active service. Those of the younger class of admirals, although eager to command the Kriegs and Marine, have little experience in the field. The, the Greek Marine has not been in any major action since the Second World War, after all, and the inexperience shows. If no solution is found, then we'll be sending rookies into the end of battle against our enemies who have a great experience in the art of naval warfare. Such a situation would be asking for disaster, luckily. The solution is right under our eyes. By using our experienced admirals as teachers for the young blood entering the pool, we shall train them to fill the shoes that our old leaders will leave. Every officer shall know the ins and outs of our naval doctrine, and we shall rest easily with knowledge that, when the old guard inevitably bows out, our young faces shall take over with grace and ease, and lead us to a victory as great as that in the 40s. Redevelop the arsenal. At the height of the Second World War, the Reich was producing thousands of rifles per week, millions of bullets, and hundreds of heavier munitions. The crash of the 50s put an end to all of that, however, as factories emptied and were shuttered and the production lines went silent. That is about all the change, however, as the Fuhrer has announced a conference on the top arms manufacturers that take place in Zossen. There, the greatest military industrials of the age will convene and return to the workers to the factories, and the factories to their war footing. Every soldier will have enough material to eliminate ten enemies, and each gun produced will be worth dozens of theirs. The world will soon remember why it's feared. The sound of German guns. No such thing as obsolete. Though our battleships have seen limited use since the end of the Second World War, there are still numerous admirals in the Kriegsmarine that are left over from those times. These masters of the ways ran rings around the British back in their day, slowly destroying the English Navy with their skill and intellect. Indeed, the fact that we still barely utilize them since those days is almost criminal and must be changed at once. By coming to these experienced admirals, we shall get the insight we need to repair and refit our battleships to become the new masters of the waves. With their experience, no flaw shall be overlooked, no opportunity to improve will be missed. We shall use those that dominated the Second World War to get the Kriegsmarine into the tip top shape for the third, and soon everyone from the Norfolk to Tokyo will tremble at our behemoths. What's we got right here? Holy shnikes. Put down resistance. My good god. That's unfair to us. That's completely unfair. That sucks. That's stupid. But oh well, the Zossen Arms Conference. Today they have met at the Proving Grounds outside Zossen along with the Fuhrer and the select members of the Greater German Reich. Council on Scientific Innovation to discuss weapons innovation. Such select weapon manufacturers are also demonstrating their new designs. Ryan Metal Bolsig demonstrated an improvement under design being worked on during the war. The high low pressure system which has allowed them to create a 40mm projectile that can be fired by an infantryman. In conjunction with Mauser, they've also demonstrated a grenade machine gun capable of halting an infantry assault dead in its tracks and inflicting serious damage to trench lines. Hugo Schneider AG had demonstrated a design of a wire-guided uh, anti-tank missile launcher light enough to be moved by infantry forces. The new missile is accurate and out to 1.5 kilometers and capable of destroying any decadent capitalist tank on a clean hit. High metal and Mauser have the right idea. Hugo Schneider's missile design is what we need. 
Every time I heard the word finance, I reached for the Luger and dropped both designs immediately. I think so too. Where are we at? Slave made guns. Extra plus, not great. We're still the same amount of inflation, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, no such thing as obsolete, my friends. Flying machines. The latest trend in aviation warfare is a helicopter. Relatively small and able to fulfill a variety of design purposes, it seemed to serve admirably in the militaries across the globe prior to the Civil War. The Reich had not been able to invest in airborne assets, as some had hoped, largely due to the mounting budgetary concerns. Now that much of the fat of the account has been pared down, however, Osberg has been given a free hand to establish more dedicated R&D sites across Germany to further elucidate where the helicopter can best serve the Reich's armies. Why not? Beautiful. Keep making more stuff. If we did all the stuff we can here, I think, as well. It's very nice. Uh, all that stuff, too. Better arties. Oh, where's the main battle tank right here? Go to that one. Uh, I did say we do want some more naval stuff, so. Good. We're actually lacking some manpower here. Or we're not lacking manpower, but it's just much deadlier than it has been in the past. Ugh. Trying to get our guys on the front line, that's the most difficult thing, man. Supply is really bad because it's just. Ugh. That's so terrible. Ugh. Those guys are gone, that's good. Five more of those. Ten more of those. A new tool for the infantry. The concept of air assault throughout the through the employment of helicopters is an admittedly recent innovation of warfare, yet a necessary one for the achievement of a swift, overwhelming tactical victory, particularly in the inaccessible and difficult terrain, indeed. The increased usage and employment of helicopters in warfare may prove useful in assisting in effectiveness of ground troop operations. Furthermore, by choosing to pioneer helicopters, we shall cement ourselves as the most efficient and technologically advancing armed forces on this planet, assisting us during this Cold War. I ask you why not. Uh, and to carry is your duty. Given the fear is prescience, prescience, uh, press science, a decision to invest in the production of attack helicopters. It's best we also invest in some more mechanical contemporaries. Through investments of resources into the research, development, and introduction of new transport helicopter designs will improve the efficiency of the Luftwaffe's fleet when attempting to restore or transport materials and men to the battlefield and beyond. Due to their uh, greater capacity, the helicopter shall be the mechanized truck of a new age. And to fight as your command. Given the fear's intuitive decision to invest in the production of transport helicopters, as best we also invest in some more mechanical contemporaries. Indeed, through investment of resources into the research, development, and introduction of new attack helicopter designs, will improve the efficiency of the Luftwaffe's fleet when we attempt to annihilate our enemies from the skies in warfare, accelerating our inevitable success. Let the blood of our enemies rain from the sky. What from that part do these guys have? None. That's what I thought. Stealth tech? Sure, why not? Oh, wait. This is jet. Oh, we're still making jet strategic bombers, huh? I'm not sure. I don't know if we really need that many more. Go down to one. We'll still make a couple, but still. Ten. Oh, God. Do we actually need more guns? Transport helicopters. Attack helicopters. November, everybody. Happy, happy November. 
taking a while to go Russia, and I knew it would take a long time to go Russia because it's just all divided up and broken and whatnot. But that's pretty pretty normal. So I think we might end with one more reading about focus. Challenging US and IJM. Despite the clear improvements made in the naval power over the course of the past few months, it seems that the message has not yet made it to those in Norfolk and Tokyo. Our rivals, as cocky and foolish as ever, seem to believe that the Kriegs are a sick man of the seas. While they may have held some weight back in the day, one only needs to take a look around the hustle and bustle of the Rector Hassan to know that these allegations are false. It now falls upon us to prove our strength to those imbeciles who are east and west. Soon exercise it on a scale never before seen shall rock the Black Sea. Our opponents shall see this and be silenced by a tide of fear and terror. And they shall know that the Kriegsmarine is no sick man. No, the Kriegsmarine is a tide of steel and gunpowder, ready to crush whichever nation is lucky, unlucky enough to stand in our way. We shall teach these upstarts admirals why their nations surrender or allied us so quickly. We shall teach them fear and they shall know that the Kriegsmarine owns the waves. So if you enjoyed the video though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll continue being up Russians and expanding our domain. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.